So I said that the importance of sex is really in, uh, of meiosis and, and sex is in the genetic variability that it allows you to generate. So how exactly do you generate this genetic variability? So there are two ways. So when you go through this pairing, so in meiosis one, okay, you've undergone the replication, you have the sister chromatids, and I said that these pairs come together okay, and line up at the metaphase plate. Now, there are two ways in which they can line up. They can line up this way, or they can line up that way. So, to start off with, with 23 sets of chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosomes, you can have 23, you can have, um, 23 to the power of 2 different sorts of segregation. You can either have, you know, they can either line up in this direction or in that direction for each of those sets of chromosomes. So, you can have all sorts of different combinations. Some gametes will have all of the maternal, um, all of the maternal contribution. Others will have all of the paternal contribution and various um, combinations in between. That's one source. The second source of variation okay, is through this process of crossing over. Remember I said that each time a chromosome pair synapses, you have to have at least one crossing over event. So you have to break the DNA and rejoin it. That breakage and rejoining can take place any place along the length of the chromosome. And in many cases, you can have more than one crossing over event. So that is allowing you to generate a completely new type of DNA at the end of it. So this combination, okay, this recombined um, chromatid, is completely novel. It has a combination of maternal and paternal genes that was not present beforehand. Okay. So that's another source of variation. The third source of variation is just through the random combination of the process of fertilization. So there are three different ways in which, um, in which you can generate these um, variations. 